Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming today. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you here. Uh, this is my 15 year visiting Dubai consecutively from the United States. Uh, and I'm always happy to be here and share uh, the knowledge and share uh, experience with you guys. So today we are going to discuss uh, the financial market, what happened in this year, what we expect to happen next year. I think we have had a fascinating year so far, one of the most volatile that anybody can remember, maybe the last 50 years or so. So if you're trading or if you're interested in the financial market, I think this will be really beneficial for you to understand uh, what are the drives, drivers behind what we see every day in the market, why things are going up and down, why oil is going up and down, gold, uh, different indexes, different stocks. So we will have a uh, quick conversation and we will discuss what we have. Just a quick, uh, quick introduction about FXDD. Uh, we were established in New York City in 2002. We still remain in New York City till now for the last uh, 20 years or so. We're actually celebrating our 20th uh, year anniversary. We're one of the oldest brokers in the business. Uh, you know, I have been with the company myself for 15 years, uh, so it's uh, always good when you look for a brokerage firm to find somebody who has been in the business for some time, who has longevity, who has uh, withstood the test of time. These are all very important stuff when you're actually looking for a brokerage firm to deal with. Um, you know, FX is regulated in Europe and in Mauritius as well. Uh, so we have plenty of protection for clients if you're looking for protection of funds. Uh, and, and more importantly, we have a very good reputation uh, which kept us in business for all these years. So like I said, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary and I will speak more uh, about this, you know, what we offer for this. Uh, so we have a just, you know, a quick promo promotional piece. So we have a, uh, our 20th anniversary. We are celebrating it by offering 20% bonus, and we also have $20,000 in uh, contest winners and uh, financial prizes. So uh, later on, stop by at our booth, uh, booth 18, and you can get more information over there. So just this is our building. We are located in 7 World Trade Center in New York. Uh, you know, this is the view from our office. FXD was uh, sponsoring for Formula One. Uh, during uh, you know the last few years with Red Bull, and uh, we also have sponsored uh, race cars in you in, in the United States, uh, and beside other you know sponsors that we have. So let's just quickly jump into our lecture today, and you know before we can really discuss what happened you know last year, we really need to understand what happened this year and why uh, it happened. So 22. You know, started with various crises uh, that really caused a big shift in the monetary policies. Monetary policies has a, it is a big factor in determining the economic outlook, not just in the U.S. or in Europe, but you know, globally. So we really had many things that actually affected what we have. We had the continuous lockdown in China, primarily. We have the worsening supply chains uh, as a part of the lockdowns in China. And then, you know, at the end, we had the uh, Russian-Ukrainian conflict or war, you know, that this is the actual first war in Europe since the Second World War. Europe is, especially Ukraine and Russia, are the breadbasket of the world. They are uh, one of the biggest producers of natural gas and oil. So this all will have a huge impact on the global economy. So, you know, like I said, we've had a crippling energy crisis in Europe. The sanctions on Russia has basically prevented Europe from importing Russian oil and natural gas, which really caused a huge problem there. You know, we have soaring energy prices, like I said, natural gas and oil. We have rampant and unprecedented global inflation, primarily driven by the energy cost and also the food, uh, you know, food cost. So inflation, you know, this is probably the word that you hear almost every day in the media. If you're watching international media, it's basically the increase in prices while your salary or your income remain the same. So things are going up, but my income is the same. 
that what is caused, you know, that it was called inflation. So, how do central bank and how do governments combat inflation? So the tools that they have, primarily the central banks, are the interest rate. So when we have a rampant inflation, we have increasing inflation, what happens? They raise interest rate uh, to basically try to slow down the economy and reduce the amount of demand that is out there and reduce also the money supply. When we don't have inflation, we have deflation, central bank tend to cut interest rate to spur growth and you know try to promote uh, more business so you know inflation up interest rate up inflation down interest rate down just so you know you know as a principle so for about a year you know the federal reserve and why is the us is very important in this because the federal the us dollar is the reserve currency of the world so whatever the federal reserve does it has a huge impact on everything globally so you know for about a year the Federal Reserve said inflation is transitory and they really didn't do anything they didn't raise interest rate they didn't make any decisions and basically they fell behind the curve which really prompted them to do all these increases rapid increases in, uh, in interest rate you know we've seen Mrs. Yellen and Mr. Powell you know Treasury Secretary and the head of Central Bank in the US always talking about the fact it's transitory and we're not going to do anything and it's going to go away next year. It actually never went away. So, uh, you know, the war in Ukraine uh, really put this to the test. You know, we've, for two years or for a year and a half, we really could, did not see inflation coming down, not in the U.S., not in Europe. And then the uh, central bank had no choice but to move and move very fast. We've seen, you know, in the frequency and also in the percentage. So we've seen really volatility in the currency market that we have not really seen in the last maybe 50 years or so, because we've never had central banks have to really push hard in pushing interest rate up high. You know, since 2008, the financial crisis, we've had a very low interest rate globally. Nobody wants to raise interest rates. Everybody's pouring money in, quantitative easing, and suddenly all this is gone. And now we really have to tighten financial conditions and we have to raise interest rates. So if we, you know, if we look at the, uh, if you look at the Fed interest rate, you'll see that we went from zero in October 2021 to close to two and a half today. And I think next week they have the meeting, the Fed Reserve meeting, and I think they're going to raise another uh, 75 basis points. And maybe by the end of the year, by the end of 2022, we should be around 4% on, uh, on interest rate on the U.S. dollar, which is really the highest we have seen in, an, in many, many years. You know, the rapid rate of interest rate hike by the Fed, not matched by any other central bank developer, you know, in the developed world, led to a huge increase in U.S. dollar valuation against all major currency, reaching historical level against the euro, the pound, uh, the yen, in just to name a few. You know, I just want to quickly go through a couple of charts. If you look at the U.S. dollar, you know, we have, we've went from maybe 115, 110 against the euro to below parity, which hasn't really happened in 30 years or so. And now we're still hovering around parity. So parity is when you have one dollar equal one euro. You know, same thing happened in the pound. But maybe the pound was a victim of the, you, you know, British local policies. Uh, we've seen the pound almost going down to 105, which I think a historic low. Uh, I remember when I used to visit the UK in maybe in 2015, I think, you know, there was $2 for one pound. So you just can imagine the huge depreciation uh, in the US and in, uh, in, uh, British pound. Same thing happened with the yen, and the yen is another different story, you know, and we'll talk about it a little further. Uh, while everybody else is raising interest rate, the Central Bank of Japan, for various reasons, mostly domestic, have really kept their interest rate down. And so far, they haven't really indicated that we'd raise interest rates. So basically, that caused an unprecedented weakness uh, in the yen. 
you know, we've seen the gold. We've, the gold went from $2,000 or maybe $2,100 around the beginning of the Ukraine crisis, the Russia-Ukraine crisis, to around $1,600 within the last maybe a few weeks. I think it's hovering today around $1,650. This is all mostly because of the strength of the U.S. dollar. So if you're trading, dollar up, gold down. You know, uh, if you're also trading, if dollar up, all the risk currencies are down. So risk currencies are Euro, um, Pound, uh, New Zealand, Aussie, all the, all the non-US, Yen, and Swissy. So these are the basic things if you are trading, just so you understand why things are moving in certain ways. So we also have seen a huge deterioration in U.S. stock markets. If you guys are trading, I know that the stock market here in the UAE and in the Gulf is doing well because oil prices are up. But in Europe, in the U.S., the, there was a huge depreciation in uh, stock prices and indexes. You know, we have seen the uh, S&P going from 4,400 to almost losing 1,000 points, 30%. You know, we've seen the NASDAQ as well, which is basically the biggest decliner, over 33% within the last year, because the NASDAQ is primarily where all the growth stocks are housed. You know, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, you know, these has, are traded at really high multiples. So once interest rates start to become up, money supplies become tight, not a lot of money going into these stocks, prices start to come down. So, you know, easy, money pol easy monetary policy, people are borrowing at a low cost, they buy these growth stocks, it's going up like crazy. Now we're seeing the uh, opposite effect. So, now what do you expect next year? You know, if anybody tells you exactly what is going to happen next year, it's going to be very difficult because things are really fluid and things are moving. But at least we can put some external framework that you can consider or you can look at to know where things are heading. So, you know, in the U.S., which basically controls the U.S. dollar, there is what is called the midterm election, which will take place next week, I think November 2nd or 3rd. So who will have control of the U.S. legislative branch, Democrats or, or Republicans? Currently, they are controlled by Democrats. If Republican taking control of the uh, you know House of Representatives and the Senate, there is going to be shift in in the U.S. policies, and this will impact uh, our financial condition overall across the globe. It will also have an impact politically. So that's another story we can discuss quickly. So you know, second biggest impact or second biggest factor will be geopolitical conflict what is going to happen in between Russia and Ukraine. Is this war going to continue for a long time? What is going to happen to the prices of oil, prices of food, you know, grains in general, wheat, corn, all these things are really affected dramatically by this. And it affects inflation, it affects economic conditions. So we really don't know how things can transpire. You know, if things started to subside, if the conflict is starting to uh, show some sort of resolution, you could see a huge uh, rally in the stock market, you could see a d declining dollar, uh, if things start to get worse, Fed just start to tighten more, you could see even a more stronger dollar. So it's really have to watch for how things will transpire within the next few months. So like I said, with the interest rate, um, are they going to continue uh, raising it? Is Are they going to be successful in keeping in, you know, inflation in check. These are all questions that you would have to ask yourself when you're really deciding how you're going to trade or what type of positions are you going to take. So let's quickly, you know, look at various currencies. So everybody is watching for the Federal Reserve. You know, everybody listen to those meetings and looking for signs of when the Federal Reserve will pivot their policy. Pivot their policy, the word that you're going to use a lot, that you're going to hear a lot when you're watching this. Pivot meaning when are they going to start to pause so they're not going to raise interest rates and then pause, hold, and then starting to cut interest rate. So this will have a huge impact if you're trading in indexes, CFDs, 
anything. So it's always important to listen to the news, especially within the next few weeks. So if the Federal Reserve will pivot and start to maybe, you know, keep the interest rate on hold, you're going to start to see a rapid decline in the U.S. dollar. There are no indications as of now that the Federal Reserve will pivot anytime soon. You know, we've seen the uh, inflation data coming out of the U.S. and in Europe, and it's still showing that inter the inflation is still rampant, still going high. So it is unlikely for the Federal Reserve to really uh, pivot their policy anytime soon. So dollar will remain a bit or will remain strong within the next few months at least. So if we're looking at, you know, euro, euro is more of a, of a bigger problem because of the energy issues. The U.S. has more of an independent, you know, supply of natural gas and oil, so they're not badly affected by the Russian embargo as with Europe. So if things continue the way they are in Europe and if they have a big bad winner, it's going to be really tough to, um, you know, to achieve growth. They're going to have issues in terms of, uh, you know, inflationary pressure. They're going to have a recession. Uh, so I really don't expect Euro to really rally anytime soon. Unless the war, like I said, unless the war in Ukraine and Russia is resolved and the Russian gas supply is, con you know, is being pushed into Europe, which there are no indication that this is going to happen anytime soon. You know, pound is more of another issue that is related to um, the British government policies. We have seen the new Prime Minister, uh, Liz Trust, has caused a huge decline in pound when she decided to cut taxes and do a really uh, social programs, which she could not really fund. That really caused the pound to decline dramatically. So it really depends what the you know, the British government is going to do what the central bank, how fast uh, they are going, Bank of England, how fast he's going to raise interest rate. So far, I expect dollar to remain a bit across all uh, European currencies, which was euro or pound or even Swissy. Uh, the yen. So, like I said earlier, the yen is a unique case because the Bank of Japan is the only central bank of the G7 countries that have decided not to raise interest rate. For some reason, inflation is not really high in Japan. I really don't have an explanation. I spoke to a lot of Japanese people. There is not really clear reason why inflation is not rampant in Japan. So as long as things remain this way, the Japanese economy is actually benefiting from a weaker yen. Japanese economy is an exporting economy, so if you have a weak yen, it's actually help them to uh, be more competitive against the U.S. dollar, against other uh, exporting countries. So I expect yen to remain in the 140, 150 range for the foreseeable future, uh, especially if the Federal Reserve continue to keep their um, you know, interest rate at a higher rate. So I know that my time is up, so I just don't want to take a lot of, a lot of your time. Uh, we have a uh, quick uh, offer for anybody. We offer a $50 free trading account. We just wanted to give you a chance to try our system uh, risk-free. There is no obligation to deposit. There is no, you know, you can make some profit. You can redeem your money. So if you need to know more information, please stop by our booth 18. Uh, if you have any question about the uh, lecture today, please reach out to me. I will be today and tomorrow in our booth. Uh, I have my email here. If you need any information or if you want me to send you this presentation, please reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to uh, share the presentation with you and answer any questions. If there's anybody with any question before I conclude, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you were talking about the Japanese yen. Um, I want to ask you about the intervention of the BOG, Bank of Japan. So what do you think about that? Because you say the price is going to stay between 140, 150, and we just see, saw recently the intervention of BOG. Yes, uh, the, 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 you know, Bank of Japan has intervened because we have seen historic level for dollar against the yen. But if you have seen none of these interventions, do actually work for a long term. It's basically like giving a steroid shot. 
it will help push prices down and give maybe a warning for a certain level, but they never have a long impact on prices. We've seen Bank of Japan interfere so many times, but it, it's, unless they, they start to have a fundamental change of policy, which means we're going to raise interest rate, we're going to follow up, follow the rest of the world, they're going to remain, you know, they're going to remain ask all the time. Japan, Japanese yen is, are not going to get stronger. But they may intervene once we cross the 150, 154, 155, then they start to get worried. But right now, they seem to be happy with how the prices are, because like I said, it really helped them in exporting uh, their product to, to different countries. So it will remain this way unless they actually have a, you know, a proper policy change. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate your uh, listening. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any question in our booth. And thank you for, thank you for having me.